For a chemical reaction or a system, the change in energy, delta U, comes from the system either absorbing or releasing heat and from the system either doing work or having work done on it. Work is the energy that is associated with changing the volume of a gas. For example, changing the volume of a balloon. In this video, we are going to consider this balloon as our system. And let's imagine what would happen if we allowed the volume of this balloon to expand. So if we're allowing the volume of the balloon to expand, that means that we are allowing this balloon to get larger. In order for the volume of this balloon to expand or get larger, the molecules of gas that are inside of this balloon have to literally push up against the inside of the balloon, and they also have to push against the, the surroundings, whatever kind of molecules are out here in the atmosphere. So these molecules inside the balloon have to successfully push against the inside of the balloon, and they also have to push the surroundings out of the way so that the volume can expand. This, as you can imagine, takes quite a bit of energy on the part of the system. We would describe this as the system doing work. The system does work because it does require energy or effort on the part of the system to push up against the surroundings and successfully push the surroundings out of the way. In terms of energy transfer, in the expansion of a gas, we see that energy is being transferred from the system to the surroundings, which should make sense to you because the system is the one that is doing all of the work. The system is using its energy to push up against the surroundings. And the energy that is being lost by the system as it pushes against the surroundings, all of that energy is going to be absorbed by the surroundings. In terms of the value of the work that is being done in this process, the value of the work will be a negative number. So whatever the numerical value is, we know that work will be a negative number. And this is because the system doing work causes the energy of the system to decrease. So if the system is doing work, this causes delta U for the system to go down. It's losing energy in the form of work. Let's imagine the opposite situation. So instead of our gas expanding, let's imagine that our gas contracts. When the gas contracts, that means that its volume gets smaller, so the gas is shrinking. And in order for a gas to contract, um, this happens when the molecules that are in the surroundings, so whatever molecules are outside here in the atmosphere, those molecules are pushing successfully against our system. The surrounding molecules are pushing up against the system. The molecules that are inside our balloon, they're not resisting. They're just being pushed up against and they are being pushed closer and closer together, which causes the volume to decrease. In this situation, we can see that the surroundings are the one that is doing all of the work. The surroundings are the ones that are pushing up against and exerting energy uh, against this system to cause its volume to contract. So in terms of energy transfer, in this case, uh, our, our energy is being transferred from the surroundings to the system. The surroundings are the ones that are putting forth all of the energy to cause this volume to change. And because energy is being transferred into our system, that means that the energy of our system is going to go up. The sign of the work that is being done in this particular situation is positive. The, the energy associated with this work is a positive number. So in order to calculate the actual value of W, not just knowing if it's positive or negative, if we wanted to calculate the value or the amount of work that is being done, 
we have to consider two variables. First of all, we have to consider how significant is this volume change as we're going from one volume to another. As you can imagine, the greater the expansion is, the more energy it takes, and also vice versa, the greater the contraction is, the more energy it takes. So the more significant of a volume change we have, the more energy it takes. And the other thing that um, we have to consider is the strength of the surroundings. So if we're asking our gas molecules to push up against and expand against a very strong surrounding, that's going to require a lot of energy. So there's, again, there's two variables that we use to calculate the work that is being done by a gas as it expands or contracts. One of those variables is P, the pressure, and this refers to the pressure of the surroundings. So how significant is that? And also the change in volume. So how big of a volume change are we asking this to do? And we have a negative sign that goes out in front of this whole entire equation, which I'll explain after we do this example right here. And let's make a note up here that the P in this equation is referring to the pressure of the surroundings. Because again, we want to know how hard is this gas going to have to work to push up against the surroundings or vice versa, how strong are the surroundings in terms of their ability to push up against our gas. And then also delta V, which is the change in volume of our system, this is going to be the final volume minus the initial volume for our gas. So here's the example problem that we're going to do. We're going to calculate the work done by a balloon as it expands. So that's this situation right here. As it expands from 400 to 500 liters against a pressure of one atmosphere. So let's just go ahead and label what we have here. Starting at 400 liters, going to a volume of 500 liters, and we're doing this against an external pressure of one atmosphere. So the surroundings um, have a pressure of one atmosphere. And let's calculate the work for this process. Don't forget that there's a negative sign. Work equals negative P delta V. And if we're plugging in the variables for this particular situation, our pressure is one atmosphere. And our change in volume is going to be our final, which is 500 liters, minus our initial, which is 400 liters. And so we can go ahead and do the math on that and we get negative 100, I'm gonna keep a decimal, I'm not following significant figure rules right now, negative 100 and our units are atmospheres times liters, which we actually write in the other direction, liters times atmosphere. Liters, atmospheres are a unit of energy, but it's a very unusual and uncommon unit of energy in terms of chemistry. Over here in this corner, I have given you the conversion between liters, atmospheres, and joules, which is a much more common unit of energy. So let's go ahead and do the conversion right here. Let's convert these liters atmospheres units, which are not very common, into units of joules using the conversion factors uh, that's provided. So one liter atmosphere is 101.325 joules and this conversion is going to leave us with a result of negative 10132.5 joules. Now let's just talk very very briefly uh, about the negative sign that we have in front of this equation, the negative sign that we carry all the way through. This negative sign is here um, just to keep consistent with how we define work and how it relates to the change in energy for a system or a chemical reaction. We have already said that if a gas is expanding, that gas is doing work, which causes energy to be, tra energy to be transferred out of the system, which should have a sign of negative W so that it causes our delta U to decrease. If we just did the math in terms of pressure and volume change, we would end up with a positive number. So we need to have this negative sign out here in front of this equation so that at the very end of all of this, the sign of W is correct. And for this particular process, as we calculated this process right here, 
the work is negative 1013 2.5 joules.